Hello, good morning, and welcome to another Harvesters Kids Zone online service. My name is Goma, and I'm excited to have all of you here with me today as we learn of God and worship together. Okay, but first, other business we pray so close your eyes and bow your head as we pray in jesus name father we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for the month of december we ask that as we worship you today you accept our praises and our thanksgiving in jesus name amen amen people okay so now it is time for praises. We're going to sing and we're going to dance and I will see you shortly. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. J to the O to the Y. I got the J to the O to the Y. J to the O to the Y. I got the J. time of praise and now I want to welcome everyone to the most wonderful time of the year this time we are celebrating the gift of God to humanity the gift of God is a person can I hear his name Jesus yes our sweet sweet Savior Jesus our topic for today is the foretelling of the birth of the Savior King Hmm, foretelling, foretelling, what does foretelling mean? I'll tell you, according to Miriam's Webster Dictionary, foretelling means to announce something before it happens. Let me give you a cool example. 
if mommy comes to you in the morning and says, I will be making rice for dinner. It's not dinner time yet. The rice has not happened yet. But she has told you already. That is foretelling. She has announced it. So if you have show and tell in school this week, you can present the word foretelling, right? <laughs> so in today's lesson, we will be learning about how God revealed to his prophet in so many details about the birth of Jesus Christ but we will pray first. Okay, so please close your eyes and repeat after me, all right? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus. We thank you for never leaving us in darkness. We ask that as we hear your word today, you will help us understand in jesus name we have prayed amen okay so let us watch this video lesson and then we will come back and share what we have learned okay god's story isaiah so part of god's story is about isaiah's prophecies about jesus and it goes like this isaiah was a prophet that means he heard from god and shared it with other people God had a lot to say to his special family, the Israelites. So he gave Isaiah prophecies. A prophecy is when God makes a promise and tells us something that's going to happen in the future. And God always keeps his promises. Isaiah shared these prophecies with the Israelites. He told them of God's power and majesty, how wonderful and amazing and strong and kind and loving he is. He said, God gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This encouraged God's family and helped them trust that God was always with them. The most amazing prophecy God told Isaiah was that he would send someone perfect to earth, someone who would take the punishment for our wrong choices. Isaiah preached about how the rescuer would bring us close to God and would be a light to the whole world. He would bring good news to the poor and rule a new kingdom where there is no suffering, pain, or sadness. Isaiah said, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. But how exactly would this rescuer arrive? People thought he might come as a powerful king who would rule over everyone from a mighty throne. And Isaiah did say the rescuer would come from the family of King David. But Isaiah also said the rescuer would be born as a baby, that he would come from a region called Galilee, that he would serve others his whole life and then be rejected, beaten, and killed by his own people. Isaiah said he was pierced because we had sinned. He was crushed because we had done what was evil. He was punished to make us whole again. His wounds have healed us. But the prophecies didn't end there. The most amazing thing of all, this rescuer would die and then come back to life. So God's family waited and waited. For 700 years, they looked and listened and hoped for this rescuer to come. Then finally, Jesus arrived and all the things Isaiah said about the rescuer came true. Jesus was born as a baby. He came from Galilee. He was a descendant of King David. He served others his whole life. He was beaten and killed even though he was completely innocent. Then he defeated death and came back to life. And because Jesus took the punishment that we deserve, all we have to do is turn away from our wrong choices and choose to follow God instead. Isaiah never got to see all these prophecies come true, but he trusted that God would keep his promises and that he had a plan. We can do the same thing even if we're going through something hard or confusing or sad, and even if we have to wait a long time, we can hope and trust that God will take care of us. And that's a little about the prophecies of Isaiah. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. 
Isaiah was a prophet. He heard from God and shared it with people. God always keeps his promises. God told Isaiah about the rescuer. People waited. All the things Isaiah said came true. Jesus, the rescuer, fulfilled Isaiah's prophecies. And th In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled by his words and began to wonder about the meaning of his greeting. So the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I have not had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And look, your relative Elizabeth has also become pregnant with a son in her old age. Although she was called barren, now she is in her sixth month, for nothing will be impossible with God. So Mary said, Yes, I am a servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And that, my friends, is how the birth of Jesus Christ was foretold. Now, what did you learn? You can tell me in the live chat, okay? For me, the biggest lesson is that God will always fulfill his promise. Do you know that the prophecy about the birth of Jesus came 700 years before Jesus was actually born? 700 years? Yes, 700 years. And God fulfilled that promise. God's word will never fail. So I need us to trust and obey and believe that if God says something, He will always do it. He will surely do it. Another lesson is the faith of Mary. Imagine when the angel came to Mary and the angel said, Blessed Virgin, dear Mary, you will have a child. Eh? A virgin have a child? Impossible. Unreasonable. But it happened. Mary believed God and said, let your will be done, even though she was afraid. This teaches us if God is involved, everything is possible. Let us keep trusting and keep having faith. Okay, so let's see how well we remember this story, all right? So I'll ask you a question, then you will answer me. You put the answer in the live chat, okay? All right, so one, who is Elizabeth to Mary? You know Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Who is she to Mary? Her cousin, yes, they were cousins. Two, the angel that came to Mary and said, Hail Mary, blessed are you among women. That angel, what's his name? Angel Gabriel, yes. Next question. Where did the prophecy say Jesus will be born? The city of Bethlehem. And the final question. What does the name Emmanuel mean? The name Emmanuel, what does it mean? God with us. Yes, and God really is with us <clears throat> thank you friends you did amazing
Isaiah 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Did you follow it? Okay, so this time I will slow down and you repeat after me. All right, let's go. Isaiah 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. All right, so who's excited for this last turn? We'll say it together, okay? Let's go in three, two, one. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yay! You guys did great. Oh, I had such an amazing time today. Now, let us remember that when God promises anything to his children, he always fulfills it. Jesus was our promise from God, and God actually sent us Jesus. How adorable is that? Now, if this is your first time worshiping with us, you are welcome. Thank you for being here. I hope you had a great time. Please ask your parents to text new to the number showing on the screen. Now let us pray as we bring the service to a close. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for always fulfilling your promises to us. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Okay, friends, that is it for today. I hope you had a great time, every one of you. Stay blessed and have an awesome week. Bye.